the bakers of Weber's Bread present your all-star Western theater, produced in Hollywood and transcribed for release at this more convenient time. Drifting along, singing a song under a western moon. From Hollywood comes your all-star Western theater, starring America's great Western singers, Boy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage, bringing you the music, the stories, and the spirit of the great open spaces. Today's special guest, the singing troubadour, Nick Lucas. And now, here are the Riders of the Purple Sage. sun all day, singing, swinging, as I travel on my way, riding, rocking, roping, branding cattle all day long, singing and a-swinging to a cowboy song, riding, roping, in the blazing sun all day, riding in the saddle all day long, to a long and lonesome cowboy song, riding through the burning desert sand, through the land and country where a man's a man, and I'll go riding. Roping in the blazing sun all day, singing, swinging as I travel on my way, riding, rocking, roping, branding cattle all day long, singing and a swinging to a cowboy song, riding, roping in the blazing sun all day. Hello there, friends. Mighty good to be back with you again in your all-star Western theater, where we have the privilege of bringing you our Western songs and stories. And now, since we've already rung up the curtain with something kind of snappy, we'd like to sn- slow down to an easy trot and sing a ballad for you. It's a favorite of almost everybody's, and we especially like it. Sometime. sweet voice, mighty smooth singing. But before you hitch up your music for another song, let's remind the folks listening in about bread. Weber's bread, the good bread with a taste as fresh as spring air. Now folks, we're not fooling when we say Weber's bread has a fresh taste. Somehow or other, it always seems to taste as if it just came out of the oven. Well, as a matter of fact, it should, because Weber's bread is delivered fresh baked every morning to your grocer. And what's more, Weber's bread is uncommonly good bread when we bake it, and it's uncommonly good bread when you serve it. So why don't you climb on the bread wagon soon? Try the fresh plump loaf and the bright blue gingham wrapper. Good Weber's bread. And now back to All-Star Western Theater. Doesn't that sound familiar, doesn't it, folks? It's your old friend and great favorite, Nick Lucas, the crooning troubadour. Welcome to All-Star, Nick. Thank you, Foy. Quite a corral you boys have here. Well, pull up a rail and sit down, Nick. You got your guitar all tuned up and ready to go? I sure have. Then how about a medley of some of the great songs that you made famous? All right, Foy. I'll sing three. I hope you remember. All right, Nick, that'll be great. Looking over a four-leaf clover that I overlooked before. One leaf is sunshine, the second is rain. Third are the roses that grow in the lane. 
no need explaining the one remaining is someone that I adore I'm looking over a pretty little folly clover that I overlooked before there's nothing left for me of days that used to be I live in memories among my souvenirs. Pack up all my cares and more. Here I go singing low. Bye bye, Blackbird. Where somebody waits for me, sugar sweet, so is she. Bye bye, Blackbird. No one he can love and understand me. Oh, what hard luck stories they all hand me. Make my bed and light the light. I'll arrive late tonight. Blackbird, bye bye. Oh, that was really fine. We'll ask you to sing again right after our story, Nick. Right now, Terry O'Sullivan, how about taking over? Boy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage are ready now to tell you another of their adventures in the West. This is the tale they call The Year of the Terrible Blizzard. As you leave Cheyenne and head west, the great stretches of Wyoming spread before you mile upon endless mile. The area is sparsely populated. A man can ride almost all day without seeing a sign of human habitation. The few people whose ranches dot this area live far apart and lead lonely, isolated lives being constantly engaged in the never-ending battle with an always demanding, sometimes cruel nature. In the winter, nature further isolates the settlers, and it's of a relentless blizzard which swept mercilessly across this area that our story's about. Foy Willing, Al Sloy, and Johnny Paul have spent the summer and fall in Montana. Now, as usual, they're heading south for the winter, but they didn't start soon enough. For as they ride along this lonely trail, they feel the cold blast of a north wind and look uneasily at the ugly clouds scudding low across the Wyoming sky. Boys, I don't like the looks of those clouds one little bit. Me neither, Foy. Looks like a blizzard's in the making. Smells like it, too. Yeah, it does, Johnny. And it's getting colder by the minute. If we don't see a farmhouse or something pretty soon... We're going to be in trouble. I'm afraid you're right, Al. We ought to ride faster. That's dangerous, too, Johnny. We've been pushing these horses since 5 o'clock this morning. Yeah. If we don't sight a farmhouse or a railroad siding or something by nightfall, brother, I'm going to get scared. You'll have a couple of guys for company, Al, and I'm not kidding. don't recognize it. This is an A number one first class blizzard. I recognize it. You can't see ten feet in front of your face. Stick close together, boys, and I mean close. I know what you mean. If we get separated. Hold up, boys. You hear that too, boy? Yeah. Listen. That's a school bell. I think you're right, Johnny. The wind must be ringing it. Well, if that's a school bell, there's a schoolhouse under it, and that's shelter for us. I can't tell which direction it's coming from. Listen. Sounds like it's off to the left. The wind makes it sound like it's coming from all directions. Listen again. You're right, boy. The left. Come on, boys. We're getting closer. Yeah, but with this wind and snow, we might be 50 feet from it and never see it. Listen close, Johnny. We gotta find it. We're getting there. It's a good thing. I haven't felt anything in my feet for 30 minutes. We better hurry. We're going away from it. Al's right, boy. It's getting fainter. Listen. Back to the right, boys. We've hit it. There's a the shed. Put the horses in there and get inside. My lady, she's been ringing the bell. I... <laughs> lady, 
Gosh, she's hysterical. Lady. I can't get help it. Shake her, boy. Lady, stop it. Stop it. I can't. I'm sorry I had to slap you, but you were hysterical. I know. Don't apologize. You've been ringing that bell all this time, ma'am? Yes. Oh, my arms are... I don't think I could have pulled that rope once more. We thought it was the Williams. Yeah. You the school teacher, ma'am? Yes, I'm Miss Martin. This is Al Sloy, Johnny Paul. I'm Foy Willing. You've probably saved us from freezing to death. I'm very frightened, Mr. Willing. And you were ringing the bell in the hopes that somebody would hear you. Yes, this is the worst blizzard I ever saw. You've got a stove and coal, haven't you, Miss Martin? One bucket of coal, Mr. Sloy. One One bucket? bucket? The load was to be delivered tomorrow at... Because I have so little coal that I told the driver of the school bus to try to get the children home. But what about you, Miss Martin? The people I live with come for me at 4.30 every afternoon. They'll never get through now. Don't you worry, Miss Martin. We'll ride this blizzard out with you. It's not me I'm worried about. It's the children. If that bus gets stalled on the road, those children will freeze to death. Do you have a phone here, Miss Martin? Yes, but I can't get an answer from Central. Let's try again. If we can get through to town, they can probably send out a snowplow. Here you are. No answer. No answer. Oh, the lines are probably down. We'll try again. Please. Please. No good. But what will we do? How long ago did the school bus leave here? At least two hours ago. And all those children... Easy, Miss Martin. I'm sorry. They probably got home all right, Miss Martin. They're probably all around their kitchen ranges, warm as toast. Oh, I'm so worried. I should have gone on the bus to see that they got there safely. Well, boys, there ought to be something to do, Foy. But what? That's the question, all right, Johnny. And what about us? Supposing the blizzard lasts three or four days. There's only one bucket of coal here. We can break up the desks and burn them in the stove. Foy, the horses, they'll freeze to death out there in that shell. You can bring them in here. Put them in the cloakroom. There's a guy here on the step. Oh, what? what? Passed out. Come here. Help me. What? That's the driver of the school bus. Grab his legs, Al. Yeah, sure. Something's happened to the bus. Yeah. Bring him up by the stove. Right here. Johnny, put the rest of that coal on the fire. Rub his wrist. This is one of the few times I ever thought bourbon would come in handy. Here. Johnny, bless you. I carry it in case of snake bite or blizzard. The bus is stalled. I know it is. I expect you're right, Miss Martin. Hold his head up, Al. Yeah. <coughs> Slap him. That'll help. <coughs> Joe, you're here. I've got to... Joe, <coughs> open your eyes. Uh, Miss Martin. The children, did you get them home? No. Oh, Joe. I couldn't see the road. Right into the ditch. Oh, no. I couldn't see ten feet. Are the children still in the bus? <laughs> yeah, nobody heard. But they'll freeze to oh, death. I left the motor on and the heater on. Where is the bus, Joe? It's about a, about a mile up the road. Phone for help. Joe? Tell them to follow the fence post. I can't see the road. Joe, how long did it take you to get back here? Forever. Wait, Mr. Willing, I can tell you. It... Oh, now I'm really scared. It must have taken him nearly two hours to get back here. Johnny, give him another nip of that bourbon. Al and I are getting up the road to bring those kids back, and we're taking your horse. Gage says empty. I wonder how long. The heater's cold. I just hope we're not too late, that's all. Look at those kids. They're asleep, boy. This little fellow's heart's beating, and he's warm. They're freezing, Al. We've got to get them back there fast. How are we going to take them, boy? There's ten. Tie six on Johnny's horse and two on each of ours. Okay, let's get moving. (laughs) 
Miss Martin, don't. It can't help any. I'm sorry, Mr. Willie. But to see those ten children lying on the floor there around the stove. Just this morning they were so full of energy and alive. They still are alive. Just barely. That's better than nothing. What do you think our chances are? I... I hesitate to say, Miss Martin. What time is it, Miss Martin? Just after midnight, Mr. Sloy. Well, I hate to say it, but I've just put the last desk in the stove. Oh, no. Well, I guess the two inside doors go next. Well, they won't last long, Floyd. That wood burns awful fast. What about the shed outside? It's wet from the snow. Yeah, sure. Johnny and the bus driver are lying down around the stove with the kids, close to them for body warmth. Yeah. I guess we ought to do the same. <gasps> there go the lights. As long as we had electricity, there was hope for the telephone. That's gone now. Do you have a flashlight, Miss Martin? No. Well, let's lie down with the children. Boy, the fire's going out. What time is it? It's three o'clock. Three five, Mr. Whirling. Were you asleep, Miss Mark? No, I'm too cold to sleep. I'm scared to start ripping up the floor to keep the fire going. Don't do that, Al. Then we're gone for sure. Well, the horses are cold, too. The horses? What about them, Miss Martin? Bring them out of the cloakroom in. Can you make them lie down? Why, sure. Then do. They'll generate more body warmth. We'll put the children around them. Come on, Foy. Right with you, Al. <laughs> Yeah, Al. I'm so cold and now I can't feel a thing. Me too. I'm scared to go to sleep. Do you think we'll survive this, boys? Awake too, Miss Martin? Yes. But like you, I'm numb. The kids are still alive, but I don't know how much longer. It's nearly five o'clock. Be dawn soon. I've got a suggestion. What, Mr. Willie? I suggest we pray. The Lord is my shepherd. I, I shall, shall not want. He, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 Quick. We're freezing. Miss Martin there? Yeah. And, and, and the kids. Thank God. Bring, bring coffee. And coal. We fixed an airplane with skis. Be there in 15 minutes. Look out the window and tell me if we can land all right. Can't see. It's nose bank. Up over windows. Never mind. We'll land. Just hold out for a few more minutes. <laughs> Oh, brother, look at that stove, red hot and beautiful. 
You get the thought out for you? Yeah, Johnny. With the coffee and the hot soup and the fire, I'm beginning to think we'll pull through. They got that phone line repaired just in time, you know. I know. They got those kids and the bus driver and Miss Martin out of here just in time, too. I wish we could have gone on that plane. And leave the horses? The snowplow will be through here in a couple of hours and we'll ride out. Yeah. You know how folks around here are going to date everything from now on, don't you? How? The year of the terrible blizzard. Boy, I'm wondering. Do you suppose that prayer helped any? Well, I don't know, Al. But I sure hate to think what might have happened if we hadn't prayed. Folks, you know, the most important job in the world is that of housewife. Ask any husband. He'll tell you. Yes, ma'am, you housewives are important. Between sending the husband off to work, the kids to school, and keeping the whole family well-fed, well, everyone agrees it's a full-time job. Now, we don't say Weber's bread will solve everything for you, but we do say you'll make your job easier at mealtime, lady, if you serve Weber's bread three times a day. Yes, you know, good Weber's bread satisfies all appetites. It's as smooth tasting and nourishing with soups or stew as it is with steak. It's a fact, Mrs. Housewife. Weber's bread helps you bring an air of contentment to your hungry tribe at mealtime. You really ought to serve Weber's bread all the time. You can buy it anywhere, you know. Next time you're in the store, look for Weber's bright blue gingham wrapper, won't you? Now, Nick. Right here, Foy. How about another song? Uh, what'll it be? Oh, let me see. I don't know. Name off a few. My Best Girl, Rose-Colored Glasses, Tiptoe Through the Tulips. Tiptoe Through the Tulips. Now, that's the one we want to hear. And I'm going to play guitar with you. Because when I was learning to play, the one man I wanted to play like was and still is you, Nick. Well, hit the chord, son, and let's go. Okay. <laughs> Star Western Theater swings to Foy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage as they sing the hauntingly beautiful Blue Shadows on the Trail.
shining through the trees And the plaintive wail from the distance Comes a drifting on the evening breeze Move along, blue shadows Move along It's pale, there'll be blue shadows on the brings us to the end of the trail for this time, friends. We're always glad when you can be with us, and we invite you to join us again next week. Before we go, we want to thank Nick Lucas for being with us, and also Mary Lansing for helping us tell our story. This is Foy Willing, speaking for Al Sloy, Johnny Paul, and Scotty Harrell, the riders of the Purple Sage, saying so long and the best of luck to all of you. Drifting along, singing along. From Hollywood, you've heard your all-star Western theater, the V.M. Bear production starring America's great Western singers, Foy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage. The script was written and directed by Scott Farnworth. The Dario O'Sullivan speaking. The makers of that good Weber's bread have brought you the all-star Western Theater, produced and transcribed in Hollywood. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. KHJ and KHJFM, the Don Lee Stations, Los Angeles.